Hi folks, welcome to Bill Fly Go. So this is the big unboxing. I've decided to make just, I've done a couple of unboxing videos for stuff that I think is uh, new or different or whatnot, but one video that I haven't seen out there is a full, almost, almost full G3X unboxing. So these are almost every component in the G3X system that's gonna go in our RV10. Um, it's missing the screens and the transponder. Those are the two items that uh, we have not received yet. You know, supply chain issues, the way the world is right now. Um, it is what it is. We'll receive it later. But I actually need to get to some of these items right now because we're doing the wiring. We're doing the avionics, uh, which you can see right here. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a mess right now, but uh, we're working on it. And I got to the point where it's like, I'm going to have to open some of these boxes, right? Like, I have to get the stuff. And uh, I promised folks an unboxing video, and I don't like doing thick unboxing videos, right? Like I want you to actually see me open something, um, possibly for the first time. <laughs> um, so here we are. Here is all of G3X except for the uh, two 10 inch screens that we have and the, uh, the transponder. Uh, we have pretty much everything else. So let's get through this. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna randomly pick connector kits, which I think makes sense. Um, and then we'll find the, the box for the item, and then we'll, we'll open that. Um, so here we go. So here's a GAB27 connector kit. Um, with the, you can see all of the connectors for the GAB27. I believe there's two big connectors for GAB27. Um, the GAB27 in our panel is going to go over here. Um, on the sub-panel, you can see we have the cutout for it. And uh, so the connector kit has the sort of the connector backs and the back shells. Um, so these back shells are really nice. I've, I've purchased a lot of uh, sort of generic, well, even brand name back shells, but Garmin back shells are surprisingly nice. So I don't, you know, while you can piece this together yourself and possibly save a few bucks, uh, you end up with a really poor uh, back shell. So this is well worth it. They give you everything you need. Um, GAD 27, this one, I don't believe I've opened at all. Um, this is how the box comes, right? Like it's got these, this form-fitting foam, and then in a static bag, there's a GAD 27. The GAD 27, um, is, uh, it has, like, uh, relays for all of your lights, for, uh, flap power, for... Um, it's got a trim switch and like all sorts of stuff. So it's big connector over here. Um, the high current stuff over here that you will turn on and off with the, the discretes that you're wiring into here. Um, and yeah, there's that. I'm going to try and put things back the way I found them just so that my life is a little easier later. I'm not sure that I'm gonna succeed. It's a lot of stuff. Okay, got 27 connector kits. Now let's first. Okay, let's grab another one. Oh, micro SD card G5. I bet this is the G5 installation kit. Yes, it is. You can see the connector right here with the lightning protection stuff. Um, looks like a can terminator. Um, just G5 uh, connector kit. So G5 is actually sort of a fun one to unbox because we have the G5 and the battery, um, which means we can do a sort of cheater um, G5 unboxing slash first power on. <laughs> so here it is. Here's the G5 and let me get the cover from the battery off. Just grab a screwdriver that I had handy. <laughs> You, you don't need to use a beryllium screwdriver to um, remove the G5 uh, battery plate. That's just the screwdriver that I had on hand. Uh, beryllium screwdrivers are non-magnetic, so I use them around magnetometers and things that are sensitive to magnetism. Um, they're not particularly expensive or anything. They're just a different material. And here is a battery. So there. And we'll give it a second to figure itself out. There we go. 
you know, like it's been out of the bag for like 10 seconds and it's already covered in fingerprints. <laughs> you just can't win. So there we go. It's the first G5 powering up on our system <laughs> and unboxing. Uh, knobs work. So what is it? 2995 here where I am right now, maybe. Um, you can see that the battery is almost dead. It's at 9%. So we won't leave it like this for long. So let me power this off. If I can power it off. Either way, I'll just pull the battery. <laughs> okay, so let me put this away really quick. Minimizing my mess. Minimizing my mess, optimizing my mess. I don't know that I'm really reducing the mess I'm making. Um, and I'm just gonna put this back real quick, just so I don't lose stuff. Yes, this is the exciting part of the unboxing video where I am reboxing things. But it's what you get, right? Like you're gonna see a big German GPS unboxing video. You get to see the reboxing parts too. Okay. G5, battery and connector kit right there. Another little box. Oh, this is a um, current shot. It's part of the um, engine sensors to measure um, current. It connects to the GEA24, so I guess that means GEA24 is next. This is not a terribly exciting one to unbox. A lot of these LRUs are, you know, they have a specific function, right? But they, you know, aren't terribly exciting. Um, GA24, so this is the engine monitor box, which is why there are so many pins on here, right? So the EGT sensors all come back to here, the CHT sensors all come back to here, um, pressure sensors all come back to here. Uh, if you're sensing voltage in different spots or current with that shunt, it all comes back to here. Um, there's a bunch of discrete uh, pins that go back to here as well, um, you know, and can and all that kind of stuff, right? So this is really the big sensor box for the, for the G3X system, uh, which is why so many things. Um, I have heard, uh, I know this is more common in the certified world than the experimental world. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, is it really worth getting the, the GEA24? Um, so we have 900 plus hours uh, on ours, uh, on the RB9, and it's a phenomenal system. Um, if you're already doing a new panel, right, like I know that some of the viewers uh, are looking at this for certified, some of the things are valid for certified here, some of them aren't, um, but uh, for experimental, this is all experimental for me. And people think, oh, I'm not gonna install the, the, the engine system, um, you know, I'm just gonna do the screens or whatever. Uh, it's well worth it. You already have your plane torn apart, right? I realize it's more money, but you know, now is the time to do this if you have the panel and plane already torn apart. Let's grab another one real quick. All right, this is a nine pin connector kit with can termination. So, so generic nine pin connector kit. I don't know which one this goes to because this one isn't labeled as it's for, it's for a specific um, LRU. My guess is this is uh, GSA 25. Oh, which, uh, GSU 25, sorry. Which actually is another part that I don't have. I don't have the ADAHARS. Um, so three things, four things, we're doing two ADAHARS. Um, three things that we don't have. Uh, so I'll put that aside for now. Uh, back plate, right? So all of the trays that things slide into, if they slide into trays, have back plates where the connectors are attached. Um, so a big connector, a little connector, and looks like a BNC. Yep, there's a BNC here. Um, so this is a transponder. This is the GTX uh, 45R um, back plate. And as I mentioned, we don't have the transponder yet. We do have the tray and the tray's installed in the airplane. Check it out. And, uh, I think I've got pictures online of where I installed it and, and what we decided to do there. So that's as much of that as you're going to see. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one is sort of fun. This is the GMU 22 installation kit. Um, it's got this little bracket. Uh, it includes a couple of screws. I believe these are brass screws. Yep, brass screws, because it's a magnetometer. So you don't want magnetic stuff around it, because it'll um, 
make it go a little crazy. And uh, it's got a circular connector instead of um, the regular D sub connectors. So a little different. Uh, GMU 22, yep, right here. So we put that there. Now let's grab the GMU. GMU comes in a big box, uh, even though the item itself is tiny. Um, because this is really sensitive um, electronics, right? It's a really sensitive component. Uh, so, you know, extra packaging, right? Do not expose to strong magnetic fields. We have decided to use uh, the GMU-22 in our aircraft instead of the GMU-11 because of the CAN bus lengths on the RV-10 um, can be a little restrictive, right? The, there's a length limit for the CAN bus um, that Garmin has tested and is comfortable with. And because of the wingspan on the RV-10 and where all the servos are and things like that, you end up with really long can lengths. So one of the suggestions is use a GMU-22 because it doesn't go in the can. It actually uses um, a serial connection to the GSU-25, to the uh, ADAHARS unit. Um, and that way, you know, you're not extending your can uh, possibly past the, the limit. Um, I'm going to cheat here. And there is a... somewhere... Um, an actual GMU-11, if I can find it, because I am borrowing one from Garmin. Here we go. There's a GMU-11 because I'm borrowing from Garmin because I want to do a magnetometer check. Um, and it's just, right, like a, just a little box. Um, and I'm going to stay tuned for a magnetometer check uh, video where I'm going to make the harness for this so that you can use your G5 and the GMU-11 uh, to just go around and check that the spots that you're picking for your magnetometer are gonna be fine. Um, uh, full disclosure, as usual, uh, I am a Garmin ambassador, so this was part of my, um, sort of my ambassador deal was I, I wanted to do a video with the um, GMU-11, and even though I didn't have one, they offered to lend me one, so. Uh, I'm a big fan of powered headsets, right? I don't want to be dealing with batteries uh, for our headset. Um, and this is the Limo, L-E-M-O, uh, Bose plug. Um, it's a standard plug, right? Like most um, headsets that do powered headsets, or many, I don't know if most, uh, use the same plug. Um, I got the kit from Bose for, the, for these connectors with the pigtails already on them. Um, I, you know, I... I can't tell you enough how handy it is to just be able to plug your headset in and not worry about batteries ever. Um, and, in, you know, because I my headset is always in my RV9, uh, always plugged into this, I've never had to, you know, like never have to deal with batteries. So really worthwhile uh, doing these. Um, I am going to do a quick video later on where I show you where I mounted this and I show you how to wire this. Um, there is a wiring sheet that comes with this, which is in my binder. Um, they're really easy. Uh, very, very much worth doing. We'll talk more about that later. Oh, here we go. Uh, GDL remote mount connector kit. Um, this is probably just a, a DB15. Yep, it just feels like a DB15. And here's the GDL. I don't know what I did with the box for this. Um, I, I took it out of the box because I was trying to figure out where to put it um, in the in the in the canopy. I'm sorry, in the panel behind the panel. Um, this is the GDL 51, so 51R, um, which is the XM radio uh, and, and XM weather uh, receiver. Garmin used to have uh, screens that had built-in XM receivers in them. Uh, they don't anymore. Don't know why. Uh, so now there's a separate box that you can get for this. Um, if you have uh, an older transponder or a transponder that does not do ADS-B in, um, you can get a GDL 50 uh, or 52R. The 50 is just the ADS-B and the 52 is ADS-B plus XM. Um, this guy is getting mounted right there. I'm gonna actually hold it in place, right there on the panel. Um, and the reason I'm putting it forward is because this, this gets an XM antenna. Um, an XM antenna right here, uh, which I can open up real quick. And I'm going to put that on top of the dash, which is the same spot that we have it on the RV9. Um, it's just a tiny little, let's take it out of the bag. Tiny little antenna, nothing, nothing special. Very low profile, um, and it looks pretty decent, um, you know, on the dash. Right, it's out of the way. It's it's black. You don't see it. 
And uh, so we have XM A because I like listening to music when I'm going on long flights. Um, it's what keeps me, um, doesn't make, you know, like it keeps me from like falling asleep, right? And getting distracted because I'm, you know, there's something that's partially occupying my mind as I'm on a long cross country. Um, and also XM weather, uh, XM just added a satellite in the Caribbean, I believe, and there's no ADS-B in the Caribbean. So I like the idea of being able to get weather out there that way. All right. What do you have here? Oh, I was hoping that this would come in last. Uh, this is the, um, GTN 750 XI, uh, SD card. So let's jump to that. It's under all of it. You know what? I'm going to put this here and we're going to get back to it. <laughs> let's grab another one. All right. Connector kit, GSA 28. Oh, this is fun. Um, so these are the servos. Uh, the servos have, so there's three servos. And I have two sets of connector kits for the three, right? So there's um, uh, aileron, um, a rudder, and a pitch uh, elevator. So the, I don't remember which of them it is, but one of them in the in the RV-10, you use a 90 degree connector instead of a regular straight connector. So I have two straight connectors and a, and a 90 degree connector. So let's open this up real quick. Got one of these, so there's three. I'm only gonna open one of them because... And this is sort of fun. It's one of the few like, mechanical devices, right, over here. What do we have here? Oh, the little bracket so that it won't uh, move past center. And here is a servo. Pretty nice. It's one of the few mechanical devices in the in the kit. I think I just mentioned that. And it's just got one connector on the back and then a little arm. Um, I really like that these servos have internal clutches, so it's really smooth. Um, and it's not adding drag into your control surfaces. Uh, so there's not a shear pin, right? Uh, you just set the clutch uh, torque as part of your checkout and your configuration um, so that you can overpower it and it senses that you've overpowered it and, you know, releases. Um, so nice little servos. They're tiny, right? Like it's, all of this stuff is smaller than expected. another um okay uh this is gps antenna um this is a gps antenna that we are going to be plugging into one of the screens one of the gdus i don't have that screen here as i mentioned um but uh this uh, it's an internal antenna similar to the xm antenna and it's going to be on the dash as well um similar to how we have on the nine um for the vfr stuff i'm okay with putting things on the dash um, for IFR um, things, uh, I put them exactly where Garmin tells you to put them. Um, so there's the, the antenna for the GTNs over here. We'll get to that at the end. Um, and that one is going to go outside the airplane, right? Like following the, the Garmin procedures for sure on where that goes. Um, while the we find that that is critically important to go there. This is also very, of course, right? Like we're still following the Garmin guidelines, but the Garmin guidelines are a lot less strict about the VFR antennas um, than the IFR antennas. Um, so internal is uh, is valid and okay for this. Uh, make sure to follow the, you know, like read the documentation on where to put the antennas, right? Like it's, you know, you want to make sure that you do it in the right spot. Okay. What do we have here? Oh, okay. Not exactly a, a Garmin product, or not at all a Garmin product. Uh, these are connectors for the VPX, which is the electronic circuit breaker system that we're using. Um, they're just mixed in with all of the other connector kits. So I'll just put this over there. And uh, you can see the VPX and where we've decided to mount it back here. Um, 
we are still trying to figure out if uh, it's going to be because the firewall is over here if this is going to be too hot for it and if so we're going to add uh, some fans to like circulate air uh, over here in the back area okay oh okay um this is the outside air temp probe um it connects to the uh gsu 25s uh just one gsu 25 um and unfortunately we don't have the gsu 25 here yet but uh yeah this just goes outside um in the rv9 we installed this under one of the wings i believe it's under the left wing um near one of the access plates uh the rule of thumb that i've heard is you don't want this to be inside the prop uh slipstream because the accelerated air that passes through it uh will sort of distort your temperature and that'll change your true airspeed and all the kind of stuff so that things aren't going to be as accurate. Um, so putting it out on the wing, even if it's just a few feet off of the sort of the center slipstream, um, really helps. Um, highly recommended. Oh, another spot I've seen people put these that um, I understand is not ideal is in the, the air intake, the NACA duct on the side of the plane. Um, so that is both near the engine, so you're going to get hotter temps there, but it's also a high flow area. Um, so there are pressure differences and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so the, a couple of people that I've uh, seen this and we talked about it and we actually went and tested it um, are seeing two, three degree differences, um, which is a fairly big difference when you're you know, making decisions based off of that. Okay, so what do we got here? Oh, this is a fuel pressure transducer. So we're actually going to open all of this. Um, so this comes with the uh, sensor kit. So when you get the GEA24, um, you can choose to purchase a sensor kit um, for the airplane type that you have. Um, and the sensor kit has not been opened. And I am going to use not a knife to open this because I can't seem to find a knife. So I haven't actually seen what this looks like, so that's sort of exciting. Okay, packing list. Oh good, fuel flow. I was wondering if I had forgotten to order a fuel flow, but it looks like it's in here. Um, okay, so we have EGT bands, right? So these go on your exhaust tubes. Uh, there should be six of these. Okay. Sort of get these out of the way. I'm gonna make a mess. Um, CHT probes. So there is, uh, on the side of your cylinders, there's a little hole that this, this probe threads into and it's your cylinder head temp. There should be six of those. Yep. Okay. And then the other two pressure sensors. One of them is a well this one's not labeled <laughs> we will read the uh the part number off of it and we'll know what it is then so 150 psig pressure sensor a 75 psig pressure sensor um and i'm guessing this is another 75 or 150 psig we can actually look oh here we go it's a 30. um so one of these is for fuel pressure the other one is for oil pressure, and the other one is for manifold pressure. Um, I don't know which is which. We'll figure it out when we look in the, you know, in the manual later. Um, then we have, I think this is an oil temp probe. Yes, it is. It's an oil temp probe that just goes threads into the engine and connects to the GEA. So you have oil temp. Another ammeter shunt, like the one that we opened before. And... What is this? Um, oh, and the fuel flow red cube, colloquially called the red cube. Um, as well. This was the one that I wasn't sure if it came with this kit or not, or if I had forgotten to order. So glad to see that in here. I'm gonna pop that in there, and let's see if we can. This is never gonna close, is it? Maybe. at these. I got four of them, right? One for each uh, seating position. Um, very handy. All right. Back shell kit, 1526 pin. Um, 
don't know what this is for. Oh, I know what it could be for. Um, it could be for the GMC 507. So this is the autopilot head. These are the most satisfying knobs in existence, right? Like go to at AirVenture, uh, go to the Garmin booth and push their buttons and flip their knobs. Um, honestly, right? Like these, these feel like should be in a, in a jet, right? Like they just feel incredible. Um, and I joke, uh, that this is how I decided which avion, of course that's not true, but this is how I decided which avionics company I was going to go to was I went to each one and I like twiddled the knobs on their things. And, uh, the Garmin ones were the ones that felt most like these should be in an airplane <laughs> as opposed to kids toy. Um, so that's the five seven. Okay. Um, a spare, uh, non-Garmin. This is just a TE, you know, mil spec, um, connector. I have a couple of these that I ordered, um, throughout my airplane building. Let's call it, uh, lifetime, <laughs> um, just in case I need an extra one for whatever reason, right? Like, I don't know. Um, same here, right? Like, I, I've had collected, like, random extra, uh, these are 9 slash 15 pin, uh, back shells. Um, every so often I come across someone who's got too many of them for some reason and, like, does, either doesn't want them or, like, is willing to sell them for a reasonable price. And I really like these Garmin back shells. They, like, feel really sturdy. They're, like, really nice. So, you know, if I can pick one of these up for, like, five bucks, I'm, you know, I'll usually do it. Um, oh, yeah, the shunt. Um, you already saw a shunt over there. Um, I'm doing two in this airplane, uh, so that I can... The, we'll review the electrical system later, but I run both my alternators through shunts so that I know how much power uh, the alternators are providing, uh, just as a way of knowing what my power utilization is. GSU 25 um, connector kit. Uh, so there's a 15 pin in here, and it looks like a couple of uh, AN bolts. Yep, so that these are the AN bolts that are the right size to mount this on the back of the screen. Um, you can mount them on the back of the screen, uh, they're in the past, um, very early in, in the G3X line, uh, there were some that were having issues being bat, 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 mounted on the back of the screen because of vibration. Uh, so the recommendation nowadays is to, uh, make sure, you know, everything is sturdy, uh, where you decide to mount your GSU-25s. Our plan is we're mounting them on the sides of these cross braces, right? So there's going to be one over here and then one over here. Uh, you see, we've got the, the little plexi cutouts that are in there um, because those areas are really, really sturdy, right? Like they're like at an intersection of like three different skins, uh, tons of rivets. So really sturdy. Um, on the nine, we have it on the back of the PFD and it works fine, right? No issues whatsoever. So, uh, for us, you know, like either one would probably work, but we wanted to go with that just for, just for fun. Um, I'm guessing this is the second one. Yep, GSU 25. We're doing two GSUs. Oh, GTX 345 connector kit. Um, so amusingly, uh, is there a backplate in here? Do I have an extra backplate? I think there's an extra backplate. No, no, no. Okay, it was a, it was the big fat connector back shell. It just felt like a backplate. Um, <laughs> so the Garmin transponders, it looks, uh, it seems from what we're seeing, um, share connector kits, right? So the 345 connector kit is the same connector kit as the 45R. Um, so just connectors. And uh, as I said, we don't have the, the tray is already installed in the airplane and we don't have the, um, the unit itself. Okay, uh, we jumped ahead to this one earlier. So this is the GEA 24, the engine monitor uh, connector kit. And you can see there's a ton of, ton of stuff in here, right? Because this is where most everything gets plugged into. <laughs> so there's four big connectors uh, in the back shells and things like that. Plop that over there. Uh, I'll get this one because this one doesn't have a connector kit that's separate. So this is the USB um, power. So it's got, well, I guess it does have a little connector kit with it, with um, these little Molex pins um, and the connector for it. 
and I really like how this feels. I've opened one of these up already. It's really sturdy, right? Like it's it's a metal case. It feels well made. Um, the USB things light up around them. I believe there's a light pin in there. Um, it just feels really well designed. Uh, my rant, and bear with me here, about USB plugs uh, in airplanes is um, a lot of people will go on online to, you know, big vendor A or big vendor E or whatever and just buy, right, like the cool looking one um, that either plugs into a, 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 a cigarette lighter socket, right, I think those 12 volt sockets, or even just one that like plugs in from the back, right, and just has power on them. My concern there is a lot of those, not all of them, I'm sure there are really high quality ones, but a lot of those um, are manufactured in batches uh, overseas. Um, and they're just cheapest possible, right, components, uh, cheapest possible design. They reduce components to, to, to save, uh, in their design to save uh, money, save cost. And um, the quality control is not airplane grade quality control. And the way US, there are switching power supplies in, in uh, USB, uh, USB chargers and um, a known failure scenario of those is they put out a ton of interference and i have talked to more than one person who told me a story about how they're flying along they're talking to center they're on a flight plan um or talking to approach and it's been a while since they've heard from them right like they, they're not hearing any radio transmissions and it's because their usb charger had failed um put out a ton of noise which raised the noise floor so suddenly the transmissions the radio transmissions are not different enough from the noise floor that are breaking squelch so they just lost all the radio communication like when they're out flying. That's not worth it to me. I'm, I'm willing to pay a little bit more to have a real, you know, well-designed, tested, you know, quality controlled um, USB plug than, you know, risk my bacon when I need to talk to somebody uh, and not being able to. So rant off, there's three of these. <laughs> one of them goes in the panel and uh, one of them goes on the back of the center console armrest and one of them goes inside the armrest. Um, in reach, um, we, as you know, uh, you've seen in some of my other videos, I use the Garmin InReach a ton. Um, I send messages to, to Mary or to friends that when we're arriving or to, you know, if I'm going to go to a meeting, I will send them ahead a message saying, Hey, I'm, it's 6.05 PM. I'm 35 minutes out. I'll see you at the airport. Um, because with RVs in particular, you're usually flying high, right? Because you're, you're, you're making the best of the winds up there, of the, the air and the efficiency up there, and there's no cell signal. At least for me, past 4,000 feet, there's usually no cell signal. Um, so this is perfect. I just send them a message, they can reply, whatnots. Especially on long trips, um, international trips, trips over water, uh, you want something like this, right? Like ship, trips over, like hazardous terrain, right, where um, you might not be, there might not be cell signal if you have to put the plane down somewhere, uh, having something like this will, will save your bacon. Um, let's open this up. There we go. It's, it's the InReach Mini 2 is a very similar to the Mini 1. Um, I believe the battery is a little better. Uh, it uses USB-C instead of micro USB. Um, I will not rant about how I believe USB-C is the future and you shouldn't put in USB-A plugs in your <laughs> airplane. Um, you can buy a little mount kit for it, uh, which is what we did. I don't believe they are included. No, they're not. Um, there's a little mount kit that attaches to the back of it and then you can clip it onto your airplane. Um, take a peek at my video that talks specifically about this. Um, I'm a big believer in these guys. So I have one of these, um, definitely whenever we go on any trip and it's just mounted in the airplane and powered by the airplane. So I never have to worry about battery charging. In reach me too. Love them. Um, all right. Sorry. Also not a G3X item. <laughs> uh, it's a safety item, right? So this connects to the G3X system. It's a carbon monoxide sensor. Um, it connects to the G3X system and will warn you if there's a high level of carbon monoxide in the airplane. Different from those little, I think they're $30, like little credit card sized things that you like stick to your panel. Um, those last, I believe, 12 or 18 months. Uh, 
triple check, um, but I believe this lasts 10 years. And more importantly, it will tell you when the sensor is bad, right? Like there's an audio cue. Um, you may have heard uh, when my airplane starts up, there's a, the first thing that comes up is CO or sensor okay or something like that. Um, it's the self test of this unit that tells you it's tested the sensor, the sensor's good. Um, in many years, we've had the nine, I think for five years now. Um, so maybe five more years, check the manual. Um, maybe five more years, we're gonna get a sensor, you know, sensor expire or sensor failed or whatever, right? And then you just send it in and I don't know if they replace the sensor or if you buy a new one, uh, but after 10 years, right, like I'm happy to buy a new one, no, not a big deal. There's a bunch of different brands that make these. Uh, this is just the one that we used in the nine and works great, no issues. It just wires into the G3X, uh, uses a serial port. Um, so it's actually talking to the G3X properly. Um, yeah, we like them, no issues, they work. Not, not everything is fun, right? Like <laughs> sometimes things are for safety. Ah, this is gonna go later. I believe this also goes later, yep. And okay, it's another 15 pin uh, high density kit. My guess is this is for the GAT29. So the GAT29, I'm gonna save this for later. <laughs> We're gonna do all of that together later. Let's take a peek at this one. Yep, there's the Gatsby 9 kit. Another 15 pin. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's do this one first. So, GMA 245 audio panel. So, this is the standard um, Garmin experimental audio panel. There is a remote version of this as well. Uh, we really struggled to decide if we were going to go with remote or not for this. Um, because I wanted the extra panel space of like just making the audio panel go away. But I found that you can, so you can configure your G3X system to act like it's remote, um, and put all the buttons on the screen for you. So I figured I'll do a few flights with it acting as remote and see how it feels. And, uh, for me, I found that I really missed having the buttons and the knobs. Um, so we decided, okay, we're going to... I'm not going to call it sacrifice the audio panel space, but, uh, you know, we're going to sacrifice some of the space um, on the panel and we're going to do a local audio panel instead of a remote audio panel. Um, that's all about how, you know, we, you know, we felt about using the buttons, right? Like there's no right or wrong here. It's just, you know, what you use. Um, Backplate. Um, the tray is actually already in the airplane right here. So the tray is just above the the GTN 750, and right here is where the uh, autopilot controls go. Um, I'm really fond of this audio panel. We've got a lot of time behind them. Um, they work great, right? Like it's I like things that just work, right? Like there's there's no issues. The buttons feel good. Um, there's also USB power here. I guess there's a lot of USB power in this airplane now. Um, <laughs> USB power here as well, right? Like the buttons feel good, um, and they just work, right? Like the squelch works. There's no, gosh, I've flown so many airplanes where the squelch is finicky and you're fighting it and you don't hear things or it's cutting you off. I hate that, right? <laughs> um, this just works. What else can I say? Let me see if I can put this back together. That's never gonna work. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. All right, 245. This audio panel. GTR20. Um, so, because of space on the panel, uh, one thing that we did um, end up doing is going with a remote second radio. Um, I struggled with this as well. Uh, so, the reason. Um, we did this was a lot of people will fit all of this stuff on their panel, right? And that's totally fine. You know, whatever. It just wasn't for us. Um, we really wanted the space sort of where that center console would go, right? Sort of in between the seats available because with our experience flying the nine, when you're on a long cross country, you take your feet off of the rudder pedals and you sort of stretch your legs and you stretch your legs right there, like directly where a center console would go where you would put additional radios or whatever. So 
I really didn't want that. I wanted to be able to stretch out. This is a traveling airplane for us. Um, so having the extra, you know, leg space um, is very valuable. Connector kit for the GTR 20. Comes with the GTR 20, not separately this time. Um, or maybe it did come separately and I just put it in there. I don't know. So it's a, just like a remote unit, just like the others. Uh, it's pretty light, um, just like the others. Um, my guess is that uh, this is the same. I, I have no behind the scenes knowledge here. My guess is that this is the same guts um, as the regular GTR 200, just without a screen. Uh, similar to how, if you look at the pictures of the audio panel, they look exactly the same. The one that's remote and the one that isn't, it just doesn't have the buttons. My guess is that this is a similar similar thing. So you're getting the same as the GTR 200 versus the GTR 20. Um, and all of the, all of the uh, tuning and all that kind of stuff is just remote. You just do it on the screen and it works great. So no issues there. Let's see, yep, it'll close. Side and let's get to the sort of the grand end of this. Um, hey, so GTX 750XI. We have flown with the 650XI for hundreds of hours in the, in the 9. It's great. Like, it really, really, like, it works really well. It integrates really well with the um, with the G3X system, so you can see everything on the on the big screens, right? Like, you just have to program any instrument procedures on the GTN uh, GTN unit itself. I think I call it a GTX. It's a GTN unit itself. Um, with the cabin width of the 10 being a little wider, the screens, you'll notice that we did two screens again, right? Like, but in front of the left seat and the right seat. And that's partially, mostly because we're a two pilot family. Uh, both Mary and myself are pilots. And it's nice to have, when there's another pilot on the other seat, for them to have access to everything, right? So instead of putting the two screens right next to each other in front of me, having them split with the radio stack in between, that way either seat can fly the airplane safely with no issues. Um, so because they're, the RV-10 has got a wider cabin, uh, there's a little more space between the, the uh, screens and having the bigger screen of the 750 made sense, right? Because you have an NFD right there, uh, you've got a little more room, you can see what's going on. So, real quick, connector kits. There's like two pounds of connectors in here. <laughs> um, it's a lot of connectors. Um, the, the connector kit, uh, interestingly, I wonder if this is any different for the connector kit for the 750 versus the 650. Uh, because just looking from the outside, um, oh, oh, yeah. Just looking from the outside, the back plate looks to be the same between the two, right? Like I, you know, again, I have no idea. I'm just like glancing at them. San Ace, it's a Sanyo Denki fan. Um, so, bunch of connectors um, uh, that the connector kit's attached to, and then a COM, a GPS, and a NAV, uh, BNC, and TNC. I believe uh, GPS is TNC and not BNC um, on the tray. And these just, this tray just slides onto the back of the, this back plate just slides onto the back of the tray here. Let me see if I can do this without making a mess. So it just fits right there. I, I'd have to like cut this off and I don't want to right now. So that's where that goes. And I have a very vocal feline partner here. Hi. Okay, so let me just put this aside for now. Okay, connector kit for the GAD29. Okay, the GAD29 is, I know I'm really keeping you from seeing the 750, okay? The GAD29 is the Arink converter box. Um, it converts Arink, I believe, 429, which is uh, a big airplane aviation protocol to CAN bus, right? So it takes uh, information from this guy and puts it on the CAN bus so that the G3X system can see it. Um, uh, 429 is a, you know, a, a very common big airplane aviation protocol. It's, it's running a lot of avionics out there. So it didn't make sense for Garmin to create a new GTN box, right? Just for experimental. So they're using that and there's a converter box. 
This is the same for pretty much any brand of avionics, um, any brand of uh, navigator. They will use 429, and then you will have a converter box. Connector kit for that, just a couple of little connectors. There's two connectors, no big deal. Um, potted, yeah, this is the config module. Uh, it's just a separate config module. It's what the serial number for this guy uh, gets written to, so that when, if you ever have to replace this under warranty or whatnot, you keep the same serial number so that the, uh, it's system ID number, sorry, not serial number, system ID number, so that when you get uh, your databases, there, you know, they will work with that system ID number. Um, very quick last one, antenna, just the certified GPS nav antenna, oh, I'm sorry, navigator, GPS navigator antenna. Um, as I said, follow the manual to the T. Please don't put these in places where Garmin tells you specifically not to put them. I've seen a lot of that out there. Um, follow the instructions, they know what they're doing. Uh, SD card uh, with database on it. And here we go. I'm not gonna pretend I didn't open this the minute I got the box in the mail. <laughs> um, so, uh, pilot's guide. I'm such a tease. Let's look at this pilot's guide. A pile of paper in a fancy little uh, pocket, right? Just nothing special. And here we go. GTN 750 XI, it's the main uh, instrument, source of instrument data, or rather, GPS instrument data. Um, it looks a lot, I wonder if this is thicker, I think this is thicker than the, taller than the 650. It looks a little taller, I think there might be one extra connector on this. I don't know. Anyway, um, big screen, it's got a screen protector on the front, which is why it looks funny. Um, SD card on the front you know, knobs that feel like airplane knobs, right? I'm very particular about that. I want my airplane knobs to feel like airplane knobs. Um, yeah, and it just slides into the tray. You can see the tray over here. Oh, I haven't done this yet. I don't even know if it's gonna fit right now because of how things are set up. Uh, yeah, it'll go that far because there's a double. But anyway, so it'll be in there. Um, it's the bottom most item. Um, yeah, this is it. <laughs> These have been back ordered forever, so I'm really glad we were able to get one. And I will never be able to get this right. Maybe. Maybe not. So, what was over here? Did I miss? No, this is the GMU 11. Uh, my original InReach, the, not, the Mini 1 uh, that we upgraded to the Mini 2 in the RV9. Um, that's it. So that's that's unboxing of almost every G3X component. Uh, you got to see them. I do have a video as well that goes through the G3X worksheet. There's a worksheet that Garmin puts out that covers all of the items and helps you select which ones. So check out that video. Um, it just covers the, you know, walks you through picking your G3X system. Uh, once we have the screens for the G3X, um, I'll do a quick, quick unboxing on that just so you can see what they look like. Uh, and the transponder, and it looks like we're missing the GSU-25, which are the air data, ADRs uh, boxes. Um, supply chain, right? It is what it is. We'll get them eventually. There's still time. <laughs> We've got a lot of wiring to do. Um, but yeah, follow our, uh, follow our other videos. Watch the um, wiring videos that are going to be slowly trickling out. And if there's something you want to see, just let us know. You know, like ask, ask in the comments. Um, if there's something that I have done terribly, terribly wrong here, I'm sure you will tell me. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll see you soon. And a cat. <laughs>